Hi guys, this is Robin with Weight Loss Apocalypse. This is a clip with a client I've been working with for the last couple of weeks. She came to me on the HCG protocol, and um, but she had been um, had lost a bunch of weight, regained all the weight back, and had been binging and binging and binging, and um, got back onto the protocol after finding a Weight Loss Apocalypse in my YouTube videos and realized, oh shit, I'm back on this crazy train. I need help. I don't want to do this anymore. So she reached out for my help. And so right now she has chosen, um, and it took her a week or two to choose for herself what she wanted to do with the round. She decided to stop this round, not because she was binging or anything, but because she felt like it was removing her from addressing her body image stuff. So this is amazing because as soon as she got off the protocol and had to face the willingness to, to be overweight and to stay overweight and to not run to how to the HCG protocol or any diet to cope, she had to face the underlying feelings that we repress with diets. Diets repress feelings that we have. We, it's an escape. It's a, distraction. It's, um, you know, it's really a matter of trying to control feelings, uh, deep seated and underlying beliefs and feelings that we have about our body in relation to who we are and our value as a person. And we're talking about the willingness to face what's, what it means and the symbolism of staying overweight or staying obese and not losing weight and what that would do to your life and how you would perceive it. And she, in the beginning, we're talking about, you're going into immediately the most people's first response is to feel sorry for their self, themselves, go into the victim and martyr position where my life is terrible. I will always be a piece of shit, horrible person. I will always feel crappy about myself and to get beyond that. Everybody goes through that, right? Because you're feeling powerless and you're having to give up the thin body that you want. And all of a sudden you're left with the fat body you don't want. And everything you've been repressing has to be opened up and looked at. And the biggest people, uh, the biggest problem people face with looking at what, you know, having to be overweight or having to be obese and everybody I work with, whether you're anorexic or a binge eater has to face the, what they're afraid of attached to the symbolism of their body. And what comes up is fear. So as you, as you stop doing your dieting coping mechanisms, as you stop um, that frantic, anxious, um, desire and need to diet, even if you're not dieting, if you stop the concept of dieting, what comes up is going to be fear. When, once you get past that victim martyr, you know, response, which is boo hoo for me, my life will suck forever. When you actually go into the reality of what's underneath that, you're going to have this overwhelming sense of anxiety, worry, and fear. And what that is, is an inner belief that whatever happens, that you can't handle it. Um, this isn't conscious until it comes up. So for you to get that awareness of, oh, it feels like I can't handle it. I can't handle people judging me. I can't handle um, what would happen if my husband left me. I can't handle it. And in essence... What you feel you can't handle is going to require some type of mechanism to control it. So you're reaching outside of yourself to control that insecurity. So really what this is about is opening yourself up to your insecurities and realizing that if you can just be with your insecurities, in essence, you are handling it. In fact, by just being with your insecurities, you are in it is a an act of courage just by doing nothing that is very courageous and oftentimes by just existing with those fears and having the courage to to just be in the presence of these feelings promotes this courage that in effect handles 
what you're afraid of. So by doing nothing and by sitting with those emotions, you're actually handling it. And the crazy thing about it is it requires nothing. There's no controlling this. There's no, I have to do something. You're just surrendering to it. And you're surrendering with this humble courage, which in effect is handling it. And so this conversation is after she she worked on that um, because we had talked previously in our past session that's in the Patreon account if you want to watch her sessions. Um, all of her sessions are being posted uh, about the victim position, feeling sorry for yourself because she couldn't fit into a chair. And she was like, oh my God, I can't fit into this chair. This is horrible. And it kind of sucked her back in, down into, I can't handle this. I have to do something, right? The controllingness. And so... So awesome. This is, this, this is really, really um, amazing to witness someone else go through the process of this. And so if you would like to watch this whole session, um, it's posted in the Weight Loss Apocalypse Patreon account. To watch the whole session, you'll need to become a Weight Loss Apocalypse supporter, which is a, uh, requires a $5 a month minimum donation. So every month charges $5 and you have access to all of the YouTube videos that I'm posting, which is about once a day. So a roughly five to seven sessions uh, a week at the at the moment. I've been really busy. Um, so if you would like my help, I'm available to you. All you gotta do is go to my website below, fill in the consult request form, and I'll get a hold of you as soon as possible. So all right. Enjoy. Okay. Okay, so last week we left off with um, accepting you're not going to fit in the chair, right? Because you were like, oh my God, the chair, oh my God, can I do this? You know, and just going into the reality of that and the freedom yeah. of not having to fix it, what that does to your well-being. Absolutely. Okay. And now that conversation seems so funny to me that I was worried about that. You know, well, because you hadn't fully gone through what life would be like if you just accepted it. So, so much of it is based on, so much of your behavior was based on fear. Do you see that now? Absolutely. And what you feared, you just weren't willing to look at. And so if you're not willing to look at it, you're going off of ignorance. You're not really looking at what your life would be like if you could just be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. I think the fear, don't you agree, the fear is always... No one will. You're just afraid of what people think. You're afraid yeah. of feeling like your life sucks because you're going to judge yourself. But if you're not judging it anymore, um, and you're okay that someone else has some idea of who they think you are and you don't need to defend yourself from it, and you're free from giving a shit, thinking about it, worrying about it, the pressure to do it, pressure to fix it, performing with your weight, if you can get all that removed, it's like giving you a brand new life. Absolutely. So it's a process, don't you think, of just getting yourself to a position where you're actually willing to just look at it? Just look at it. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, and should you feel yeah. sorry for yourself? Should you feel no, and that's, yeah, and that's a lot of what I was looking at this last week is, like, how much of a victim I was all the time and blaming everybody else because, you know, oh, I'm so sad because I'm fat and I would dealt this body <laughs> You know, so I feel like a lot of processing is happening, you know. Well, can you see that the only reason you would feel bad about it is if you believe that being thinner is better and makes you a better person and being thinner would make your life better, that you would, if you believed that true with your whole heart and soul, that you have nothing but feeling bad about yourself. Because the more you efforted to lose weight, the more issues you had with food, the more food yeah. you would eat, the bigger you would get, the worse off your weight would get, the more distance was created between you and your thinness, which was where happiness resided. Yeah. I think that's really a critical question people have to ask themselves is, is, is being thinner really what makes, is, is that what, where happiness is, is in reality? If it requires that you're self-absorbed, obsessed about the body, my, everything you have is devoted to micromanaging food because yeah. you have to, food is the threat to your thinness. Yeah. So immediately food is placed as a threat instead of a security. And then there's nothing you can 
do about those impulses to eat. They're going to be there out of just your animal nature. Yeah. So you're living in fucking drama. Yeah. Drama but, you know, looking at that, it's like once you question that belief, would I really be happy or thinner? Would I really in, in, you know, would I be free if I was thinner? Because sometimes people attach happiness to freedom. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're ha getting freedom today. You feel free. And would you say you're overall happier? Yes. Okay. The difference now is, is attaching that freedom to being thinner. First of all, is that even true? Can you be free if it's attached to being thinner? No, no. Why? Because you're a slave. To what? To, you know, this ideal that being, you know. Well, you have to, you're slave to the dieting. Yeah. So it's a trap. Yeah. It's like, you get it, but you're trapped. It's like a one-way cage. Yeah, and I've been there. I've been where I wanted to be, you know, where I supposedly wanted to be, and it was worse than be being heavier. Because, so I, because why? Because I had to constantly keep it up, and I was, it was more, it was obsessed with, I couldn't even be a, a normal person. I couldn't even function, really. Right. Although yeah. there's the benefit of fitting into clothes, wearing cuter clothes, and you could sit there and go, yeah, but let's not, let's not blow that up. The truth is. Yeah. Well, even when I was at the size, I, when I look back, it, you know, I still wanted to be a smaller size. So it was, yeah. yeah, you didn't yeah. even, you could, the, uh, I often describe this like there is no destination. The illusion is a destination. It's a mirage that there's a destination. And when you get there, it's done. But it's yeah. not. I've never met someone actually who's attached happy <clears throat> happiness and freedom. It's really about freedom than happiness to being thinner, who've actually gotten thinner and att attained it as if it's a stable environment. Yeah. Because yeah, because of done. correct. Yeah. So I've met tons of people who've lost a ton of weight and they are thinner. But they're miserable in their life, held hostage to every mechanism in place that they've used, whether it's exercise, uh, diuretics, weight loss pills, the HCG protocol, this um, just constant obsession with what's in their food, what's not in their food. If they did bad, what they need to do to fix it, it's it's a trap. Yeah. You don't get freedom. You can't. Mm -mm. Yeah. And that's what I realized, too, at the very end because I was trying to find any way out, any way out other than suicide, which was right there. But I remember thinking, well, as I was feeling sorry for myself, because I was like crying about not going out to exercise or binging and purging, right? Yeah. That honestly, do I really want recovery if I'm going to feel sorry for myself for not doing what I want recovery from? Yeah. 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 I'm going to feel sorry that I don't get to go out and exercise compulsively. Um, you have to get to a place where you realize if I'm going to feel sorry for myself, I'm just going to keep on going in circles. I'm really not ready to, I'm not ready to let those go. You know, yeah, so you, I have, think I did feel sorry for, yeah, I mean, that was the first week mm -hmm. or so. Yep. Yeah. And then once you realize that it goes in circles, okay, I feel sorry for myself. What am I going to throw a fit until I get to go do whatever I want to do? You know, yeah. whether it's go binge or go exercise or go purge or when, when in reality I'm miserable. So I'm, if I'm going to feel sorry for myself, I better just accept this way of being as it is. And for me, I was to the point where that way of being was worthy of suicide. So it was intense for me. Yeah. And like for you, it probably was intense, but not like that intense. But we had the foresight to look at it without, you know, suicide right breathing down your neck. And you could see, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't do this. If I, if it requires I look like this to be thin, I really have to question if I really want to be thin or not, do I really want what I think I'm going to get from it too? And I think that's the hardest part is it's obvious misery living with obsessive compulsive binging and purging and dieting and obsessing over what's in your food and the exercising that's people fatigue and they're like, I just can't do it anymore. Well, no, no, duh. It's too, it's dumb. It's hard. It's ridiculous. You shouldn't have to live that way. But in order for you to get relief from that, you might want to let go of why you're doing it. Why are you obsessed about food? Why are you micromanaging it? Why is it so intense for you? 
right? What is it that you're getting out of it that's worth that type of intense, obsessive, compulsive behavior? You know, and it, you know what it really comes down to is the these fantasies. It's like I'd have to give up, you know, for some people, they truly believe that men only love thin people. And, of course, there are men out there who are thin supremacists, right? Yeah. But they're discounting all, all other people, but and they're projecting their thin supremacy on everybody. So they're being held hostage by their idea of being thin is the only thing that makes you a valuable person. So for them to recover, they have to really question that belief system. They have to be okay that no one's going to like you. You're going to be a big disappointment to your parents, you know, and then you have to question if you actually believe it because you, you can say, I'm okay with everybody else not liking me, but I will feel bad about myself. And that's a real hitch for some people because they go into self-loathing within their own concept of themselves. So now you have to really break out of the concept you had of yourself as a thin person. Is that really who you are? Are you really that thin, superior individual you're striving to be, you know? And if it's true, then would it require an obsessive compulsive eating disorder? Yeah. Or are you trying to force something that's unnatural? You're trying to force a body image that is unnatural. Just think about that for a second. So you have to really question then, how would you relate to the body if you knew what it was in reality? Because you're trying to force something that may not be realistic. So you have to go, well, what is realistic? So here we are looking at the current state of your weight and you have to be open to what is realistic with it, which means you could never lose an ounce. What if your body's happy right here? What if your body's happy 20 pounds heavier, you know, without the restrictions? And if you just eat like a normal human being, you're no longer dieting, but you're also no longer binging. Yeah. 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 I'm okay with that. It's so awesome, isn't it? Yeah. And then, you know, I'm thinking about, like, going through, like, my, you know, how I was presenting, you know, issues with my dad and all that stuff. It seems to be, like, lifted <clears throat> automatically because of this, but I'm not sure. You know, if I well, if don't. you're allowed Grace to be real and do your best and... What do you think happens then with how you feel about other people? Don't you agree? What it takes to see yourself this way is compassion to, to, towards yourself. And to know, well, I tried my hardest. And even from the outside, it's failed. It sucked. You know? And if you can see that in yourself, that you really didn't mean harm. Yeah. You didn't. You can kind of see everybody else is doing the same thing, right? They didn't mean harm by that. They thought that was the right thing to do. They thought that that was going to be beneficial for me for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't, you know, yeah. I don't know. So I feel like you stop resenting other people too. And you take responsibility for yourself for maybe some reason you had some resentment towards your father and you were holding him responsible. And in order for you to recover, you kind of have to become self-reliant. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've been, I spent a lot of time with that resentment so it just seemed to naturally I didn't have to pick it apart you know and all that like I've been huh. for years I wonder too if because oftentimes this happens with people where a bunch of issues just go away without effort and so yeah. you're like why do I all of a sudden don't care well I wonder if it's you are using your weight loss as a compensatory behavior to cope and so when you surrender that coping mechanism, you're inherently unraveling why you're using it without effort. So I had, this is why I don't think it's necessary that we have to go through and pick through it like a, with a fine tooth comb. We don't yeah. need to, because once you kind of surrender this coping mechanism and you deal with the underlying feelings that you have about yourself, those feelings of, um, I'm not capable I can't handle it. And you actually give yourself the courage to handle something autonomously. What happens to your need for your father to make up for what he didn't do? It's not, you, don't, it's not you don't need him anymore. And you can see that it was maybe unfair for you to blame him for what he didn't do. Yeah. What he did wrong. When in reality, you just, you can handle little things yourself now, which kind of gets him off the hook. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, it's kind of, it's magical because I kind of 